It is indeed a great honour and I'm indeed humbled uh, to stand before the, an audience of internet greats and internet luminaries. I feel so undeserving and uh, as they say, the more you reward the undeserving, the harder they will work in the future. So I felt <laughs> that I will have a lot of more work cut up for me going ahead in the future. There are of course many, many, many people I need to thank. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, there are so many of us who were involved in constructing this incredible global edifice that will stand the times of history. Uh, of history. Uh, and we've basically created something never in the history of mankind, as Jim, Jimmy Wales put it, puts it very well, that the sum total of human knowledge can now be accessible by everyone. So it's indeed incredible honor for me to receive this, uh, um, to be inducted into this Hall of Fame. Uh, as Lynn said, it was indeed many, many people. And I'm gratified to know that there are at least two ladies who are in the midst of the first inaugural Hall of Fame. And as somebody used to say, it's really too many. And I hope that uh, going forward in the future, we will have more people in the communities that are underrepresented uh, coming forward to serve the internet uh, uh, cause. Uh, I really miss the days when uh, my, one of my internet uh, elders uh, or mentors uh, remarked to me he, uh, when I asked him, uh, why are you doing all these things for free? So one of the things I really missed was that internet spirit of volunteerism. Uh, people get really rich these days. I saw the slide which uh, Professor Kleinrock showed, you know, billionaires at the bottom this morning. And I really felt that this was something that we need to bring back again, that internet spirit of voluntarism, to look after those who are less privileged than us, those people who are underprivileged, uh, those people who did not enjoy the benefit of an education as we have, and to really reach out to the disenfranchised. And it was for that reason that I was you know, always involved in helping some of the minority groups uh, as uh, chairman of the APNG, uh, the Asia Pacific Networking Group that gave us APNIC. Uh, I was involved in help, one of the early helpers to promote uh, uh, internet for Asian women. Uh, I was involved uh, for some time helping uh, people with disabilities uh, to get on the net. Uh, I was involved in helping at one time people who were not speaking English get web content in, uh, uh, on the web, uh, involved in the multilingualization of the web as well as uh, the internationalization of the domain name system. So I was always fired with this enthusiasm, uh, that spirit of internet volunteerism to help those people who, are, uh, who need internet more than uh, we ourselves. So it's indeed a great honor to stand before these, this august audience of uh, internet luminaries and also to maybe share that going forward into the future, I think we should be expanding even beyond the internet planetary, uh, the planetary system of the internet as Vince used to put it, that we should even go beyond that. And I stand here as a, or I used to be a professor in uh, biochemistry uh, before I was sucked in by Dr. Tio Ho Tong, my, 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 my former boss, uh, into the things internet uh, in the 90s. And uh, I've gone back to become a professor in biochemistry working on bioinformatics and computational biology. So I'm quite the odd one out here amongst these internet engineers and network professors. Uh, yeah. But I like to highlight the point that all living things for eons are living things because they process information and they've developed over eons the ability to transfer information from one place to another, from one organism to another. And we, in a sense, in the internet community, are just reinventing something that nature has already invented a long time ago. But of course, in a different form, we have carbon chemistry and, of course, most of us dealing with the silicon chemistry. But the point here is that we are increasingly beginning to be able to read that source code of nature through 
tremendous advances in genomics, for instance, proteomics and so on. We're able now to read that source code of life. And we will see incre increasingly going forward into the future this convergence as well of biological information and digital information. And I really sincerely hope that I will live long enough, hopefully as long as my grandfather who just passed away not so long ago at 101, that perhaps I may have that honor and chance of seeing yet another level of integration and convergence, and that of fusing biological information with digital information that we in this audience have been a glorious part of. Thank you very much.